And speaking of what's written, oh, this series is over in the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference. Let's talk about the Heat, though. Let's stay in there because a lot of Laker fans are mad at me because the only time I talk about the Lakers is when they lose. Well, I could talk a lot right now about the Lakers, and I'm not. See, the Clipper fan in me is being restrained to not laugh at your demise because you guys did go farther than we did. So respect to you Lakers out there. And we are keeping your reservation. Open that Cabo. We'll wake up early at the airport, pick y'all up, because y'all be there in a couple days, right? We got the pool chairs reserved for you. We know what the resort looks like. We got the lay of the land. Come on, Laker fans, come on. But I ain't gonna talk bad about y'all when y'all losing. I'm gonna talk good about the Heat, because they're winning. They have a 3-0 lead on the Celtics. Damn, Boston, what happened? Let's talk about it. Eight seed at Heat. Remember playing Heat? Mm-hmm. Continue their improbable run through the Eastern Conference playoffs. A stretch that is now just one game away from the NBA Finals after Spolster. That dude. Oh, oh. I'm going I'm to hire me a videographer, a film study dude to help me coach. <laughs> coach my little itty bitties because, damn, Spolster is a beast of a coach. His team embarrassed the second seed at Celtics. 128-102, we all watched it. They did so by relying on a bunch of other cats. They're itty-bitties, they're others, right? Younger players who are embracing the moment. And of course, they still don't and will not have Tyler Hero. What the hell? Talking about balling. Uh, Gabe Vincent went out there, had 29 points, 11 to 14 from the field, hello. In the postseason, been defined by obviously we can't start this conversation without talking about Jimmy Butler, his brilliance, how great he's been, out of bio, how steady he's been, man, catching the lobs, everything, just a presence in the paint, offensively and defensively, beasting. We got to talk about Duncan Robinson having 22 points off the bench, Caleb Martin, 18 points. All those guys collectively set the tone. What's amazing about this is they don't always have to go through Jimmy Butler. They don't always have to tax Jimmy Butler. Even though you know Jimmy Butler always up for the task of being taxed. <laughs> that sucker there, man. He is, woo, talking about a man of character, a man of integ integrity on the court. I ain't talking about like how he live his life. I'm talking about he going to do everything and all the right things when he steps on that basketball court. It's fun to watch, right? Everybody thought the Celtics going to win. Barkley, every game is like, nah, Celtics winning the next one. They winning the next one. They winning the next one. No, they not. They not winning any of these games. Maybe a gentleman's sweep out of respect for themselves. They might get one more. I doubt that. Okay, let's talk about how Adebayo says they're believing in one another and believing that we can get a win. Believing that we can beat the number one team in the league. Eh, number two seed, whatever. You know, belief is real, and we got a will to win. All right, my man Vincent also said the key to him being great right now is be as present as possible. Team looks more unified. Team looks like they're more together and have a greater sense of pride. All of that's coming. Spolster even talked about it. He said, Jimmy and Bam both feeling it. All right. They're just infusing the other guys with confidence. But then they also know that they have to impact everybody else on the roster. And you know, we talk about it all the time. You want to breathe life into other guys and ultimately enjoy someone else's success. But that takes great emotional stability. Woo! Supposed to hit me right where it hurts. You know, there's a lot of pressure and voices and noise coming at you from a lot of different ways. But those guys, those guys get it. And you're seeing some of the role players really grow and be able to expand their games. That only happens if your star players really want that. Yo, Spolster got the cheat code. <laughs> he got all the Cliff's notes, like the whole bookstore of Cliff's notes. That is amazing what he just said right there. He's talking about how leadership truly looks and is example. Like the first domino that falls is leadership. And it's something that I talk about with my players and it's something I talk about all the time in terms of being a role model is not just a privilege, it's a responsibility. And if you're a leader on a team, you are that team's role model, right? I look at my son, especially in football. I'm like, you know these kids are looking at you. I want them to understand that. I was like, 
It's happened so many times. We get in a huddle or, or it's a tight game. I'm like, okay, guys, we're about to run a play and they interrupt me. It's like, give it to MJ. Like, why? Because they're in a situation where they know who is leading them in production. But that doesn't always mean the one who produces the most is emotionally stable enough to also be that leader, right? Some guys are just the best player, but are they a leader? And according to Spolster, and according to everybody who watches basketball, we can get it. Jimmy Butler is a leader, and Bam is doing his thing as well. But that's amazing to be so open that you're allowing others to now step on you to become who they can be, right? Step on your shoulders, right? You know, get into a situation where they feel greater than they were because you, the great, has allowed that. Oh, this is so deep. This is so real. It happens all the time where it's funny growing up broke, growing up on welfare, we were stingy. Everybody was stingy in part because you ain't got that much. So stingy looks different. You're like, nah, I ain't giving you that. Why? Because I ain't gonna have nothing else. I get it. But even the mindset when we were abundant in something, it felt like we still were just like, maybe it was the fear and anxiety of losing that, even though we had a little at that time, right? You just always scared and terrified and triggered by poverty. And that happens to me. But then you get around people who have abundance and means, and they're so open. I remember the first time I got invited to somebody's like house party, and I ain't talking about like our house parties. I'm talking about like a big, nice mansion, and they inviting 500 people, and you like all these people coming? Because I used to do it, and I used to throw parties too. But I did it with a different intention. I was just trying to say, how many girls could come? <laughs> how many girls could stay? <laughs> you know what I mean? But I remember I got invited, and I was like, Dude, just gonna tell me where he lives? I'm like, I don't know him. Um, he know of me, and I know who he is, but I And I always thought it was weird. But the higher you climb up, I swear, even though it's less space, people are more open, typically. They're like, oh yeah, come over. Oh yeah, you can use my car. Oh yeah, you can use my boat. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Sometimes even, oh, oh, you're going to the East Coast? Won't you just hop on the jet with them? These people are, I'm like, these people growing all these people crazy. But now you understand that's what we got to live in, in that abundant mindset, right? You can go back to the holy books they talk about that, let alone when you don't have anything. What was, who was the comedian that said, you know who needs prenups? Not people with millions and millions of dollars. Somebody with only $5, right? You take two fifty, <laughs> I'm hurting. So I think that was Chris Rock, point being. Let's all have an abundant mindset because Spolstra and these dudes have now opened up the real conversation. Talent versus team, right? More talent versus stronger unit team. What wins? For me, I still say talent. I don't give a damn what y'all talking about. Nine times out of ten, the more talented team gonna win, even if they bullshit, even if they playing around, right? I've been in games before where I was like, oh, we better than them. We get an early lead, we don't even care. We, there's nothing you can do, right? It's like the little rascals, dude just trying to fight you and you're just holding back like, all right, whatever, <laughs> whatever you're gonna do. So I always take more talent, but moments like this makes you realize neither one is absolute, right? You can pick one and say, this one wins more, and I would think talent wins more. Jordan, right? Kobe, Duncan, that's the talent, right? LeBron, you see it, like Kareem, like Magic, like the talent, <laughs> don't give me no, oh, the Pistons, <laughs> even though they were talented, but that was their better unit team. Pistons, Pistons, give me another one. Maybe the Heat, Pistons. <laughs> I'm like, nah, miss me, dog. It's always talent for me. What do you guys think, right? And culture, obviously, is what decides if that talent's going to take root or culture is what dictates how that team unit becomes so whole. I always tell cats, hey, if we want to get into a fight, what's going to win, this or this? <laughs> I beat that finger up, and that's the Heat beating up the Celtics.